So what, what I was going to talk about, something that really like made me happy during the film was the music. And, it, and there, there was the soundtrack of all the old 80s hits and stuff like that, and that was so good. Extremely good. But the thing that, the thing that hit me was the actual film score. Um, because in, in all the movies that you watched as a kid, whether they were 80s or not, uh, like let's say Indiana Jones for her example, you can easily, if you watched it, you can easily hum the tune to Indiana Jones. Like dun, 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 dun. In Back to the Future, you remember that too. In uh, E.T., you remember that. In the Close Encounter of the Third Kind, you could whistle the tune they used to communicate with the aliens. In this movie, it's just the same. Like in almost every scene that there wasn't some kind of uh, some kind of eighties hit in it, they had an extremely good score that reminded you of old movies. Like movies these days, it's just like okay, here's a quick background music. There you go, have fun time, and that's it. Yeah. But like in this movie, they have like this amazing score that just yeah. that if if I like were to just think for a little bit, I could easily remember it and start humming it as well. And then they also bring scores from old movies like this. Yeah. Is not going to spoil anything. The scene where they use the Back to the Future music, right? Such a good scene, and it wasn't yeah. just because of the cinematography. It was because they used that music. Right. The music. props are iconic. The music's iconic yeah. too. It's so important in those movies. They're like characters. Yeah, exactly. Because you're expecting to hear that music, so you connect them. If you're going to see Superman fly by, you're going to hear the Superman. Fly. Like the second, the second you hear the, those little, the, those pieces of music, you instantly get like adrenaline pumping through your veins. You, yeah. You're like you're remembering all the scenes that had those songs in it and stuff like that. And it just it hit, it hits home for you. It, it gets it gets you in the right place at the right time. Yeah, it took us back to the future, <laughs> you know, to a certain degree. And that was one of the levels of irony I saw in it because Back to the Future itself was a, a nostalgia film. Mm -hmm. So for the people watching it in the '80s. People who grew up in the '50s liked to watch it too because they were like, "Oh, he's making all these references to the '50s," and, it's right? like, and Spielberg was sort of genius in how he did that. Yeah, and like so, at the same time, they have the sounds, yeah. like the sounds when the yeah, Iron Giant's yeah. there. They even got Vin Diesel to voice the Iron Giant again. Yeah, yeah. with that, I was like, "Whoa, <laughs> that's real good." And see, I I think it was all strategic in them doing it. Initially, the film was supposed to have John Williams again. For the score because they were right. yeah. Steven, yeah. Spielberg, Steven Spielberg and John Williams they've been together as peanut nice. butter and jelly like forever. However, what he did do was he brought back his other old friend, Alvin Silvestri. And so when they put him in there, of course, Back to the Future and everything else that he has ever done, including some of the Marvel mu uh, music as well, that was incorporated into this film. Yeah. Yeah. And that was that was a beautiful part of it. Mm -hmm. And I, I talk about that in my review that spoiler free. In the Lions Pride newspaper. <laughs> so um, like that that was the component that this movie could not go without. The music was integral to just building nostalgia and building this new world, you know, this world where everyone is kind of included. You know, the old and the and the new. Yeah, okay. exactly. So I, I think that's how it kind of worked out for me. Just, uh, you mentioned the world. I really like the world, the setup as well, even though it was really quick, but um, it made it, it made the world seem possible in our eyes, and it really allows us to think about different themes like identity, and like perception versus reality, mm -hmm. and it really immerses us in mm -hmm. the setup of the movie, it immerses in the movie itself, and allows us to put ourselves in the character shoes, and I, I really enjoyed that, how they did it. So overall, can I get a score out of five? <laughs> You already know it's five out of five for me. There's no, there's no competition for me. It's five out of five. I'll give it four point five. Yeah, I gave it four point five <laughs> out of five too. I can't, I can't. I, really, you, was can't, a, you can't give it. It was awesome, points. but I can't say that it was without flaws. Yeah. yeah. And flaws that I could understand, but there are flaws not that. So I give it four point five. I'll take the middle road here with four point six. Oh, yeah. four point yeah. six. Yeah. I'll round it up to a five. <laughs> <laughs> At the time. It's on the higher end of the board, so yeah. In honor of Steven Spielberg, uh, all your scores didn't count, and we have a group score of five. <laughs> <laughs> um, so, I mean, okay, so thanks for watching uh, Lions Pride Watch. Uh, stay tuned for a spoiler version, which then I can like really get my, my tensions out <laughs> about all this, because I, I can't speak too much, but... This is Lions Pride Watch. You can also look at the spoiler-free review in the Lions Pride newspaper, like I put the plug in for review. 
So keep watching, keep reading, and see you next time.